First thing uh, for me that comes into mind right away is where the outfielders are playing. You know, um, having played here before in the past and having seen them on TV, you know, they're outfielders. You have to play deep here to avoid, um, you know, the doubles and the gaps because line drives hit over the second baseman, short swaps head, or hard ground balls through a shift. They're going to get through the gaps if those guys are playing regular depth. So, you know, they're playing double play depth to cut that off to, to make sure they, you know, keep guys in um, uh, double play position, et cetera. So for me, as a third base coach, I immediately look out out there to see where they are if they're you know that's the number one thing number two is who we have on base with whether it's albert with, with not a lot of speed or whether it's trout with speed um, who's at the plate who's on deck a lot of things run through your head but the very first thing that you notice is where those guys are playing you know we have already been prepped on their arms we've played these guys before so we know gonzalez has a tremendous arm and uh, blackman has a pretty good accurate arm so we know how their arms are and we're prepared for that um, so it's, it's a matter of how hard the ball is hit where it's hit and if the runner gets a good read or a good break and how many outs there are. So there's a ton of things that run through my mind. I take this park a lot like Fenway Park. You know, there's a lot of nooks and crannies. Um, you know, Fenway Park left field is, is uh, real shallow, but when you get out creeping out towards center field and the triangle out in center field in Fenway Park, it's deep. And that's how this field is right here. It's a big, vast, deep field. So um, I always default back to my phrase that I always tell myself with men in scoring position or man on first with Albert up or Mike up, it's always let the play develop. Don't pull the trigger too early and send a guy and don't be too late sending a guy. Just let the play develop. Don't assume anything out there. Don't assume that the outfielder's gonna, you know, feel the ground ball cleanly. You know, and haven't been out here for early work, before the rain came out, balls were skipping through the grass and getting through the gaps pretty quick. But now with the rain, it might play differently. So we'll have to see how it is with the balls in the gap. You know, and being out here early and seeing how balls play off the wall, you know, right field, they have a fence. You know, sometimes the ball will hit the fence and kind of just drop down. Sometimes it'll hit the wall where the padding is, shoot back out. And other times it gets stuck underneath the wall out there. So it's, to me, it's a lot like Fenway Park. There's a lot of different things that come into play. Um, it's fun and it's exciting as a third base coach, but it's also it can be knee knocking out there too, because you don't want to uh, make a poor decision and, and cost your team runs. So let's talk about positioning. You play shortstop, you understand the communication and the gaps between you and the outfielders. How does that change here as to priorities on pop-ups, how the ball is carrying, and also on cutoffs and relays. Well, playing against these guys, you know, they have two, two middle infielders who've been here a long time, uh, or played here a lot with, with Tulo and, and LeMayhew. So, you know, for me, it's knowing um, the distance between where they're playing. You know, if they're in double play depth, it opens up vastly. Or if they're playing infield in, it's even more. It changes the dynamic of the, of the, the um, space in between the outfielder and the middle infielder. So, you just have to be aware, run through your mind, you know, what the situation is, where we are in the game, um, who has a good arm as an outfielder, and who can go back as an, as, as an infielder, catch a ball like a Derek Jeter style. You know, Tulo can make acrobatic catches turn around, and he's got a plus arm. So you have to be, be careful of that. You can't, like I said, you can't assume that he's going to catch it or not catch it. You just got to let the play develop. 